Welcome back, everyone, to Mechanics of Poetry. This is season two, as you know. We're up to episode 14. And it's been a delight so far to see all these different poets and their poems, really look at their poems up close, examine them, shall we say, and of course, get information on how to acquire these poems. And I'm having fun with the, my background right now. It seems to change my hairline. <laughs> anyway, today's poet, wonderful poet. So should I prejudice you, prejudice you and tell you that he's an award-winning poet? Does that prejudice you? We'll see. And of course, Alicia Miguel Esper. Did my best there. Is free to say whatever she wants before we bring up the first poem. So go ahead, say what you like. Well, I'm 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 glad to say. Well, I'm happy to be here. And one of the reasons is because, you know, you were instrumental of me still writing because, uh, you know, I started the first day, uh, I think I went to a group and, uh, and somebody told me, I think it was GT, told me about your group and I send a poem, send a poem. So I did. And then you say, okay, I'm publishing your, your poem. And uh, so I went to the reading that was going to be a reading. And that kind of hooked me, it really hooked me. And then I just, uh, you know, submitted for the little chapbook and I was the winner and I was like, ah. So, you know, and I always felt a lot of encouragement from you and from the group in general. I mean, it's been very, you know, inspiring in a lot of ways and I wish it would get more criticism. So now you're going to be hard, but, you know, I think it's good to get criticism. And so you can see things from a different angle, but, um, Glad to be here, so I'm ready when you are. Thank you. All right, I'll do my best. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, there it is. Okay. Now it's looking at a size that Kaluki can read. Okay, could you go down to the bottom because there is a few uh, terms that I think I should clarify before I read the poem, just because. I may know, but I may not know. Okay, okay these are the few uh, terms. Uh, Sirocco is an African wind which blows through Europe. Uh, garum is a fish sauce that the Romans loved. Uh, Patera is a flat boat for hunting ducks. And that's what they call the ones used by the migrants crossing, crossing the Mediterranean to, to go to Europe. Oud is an Arabic string musical instrument, which is a precursor of the lute. And Mongo is a mountain by the sea in Denia, which is an old Greek, close to where I was born, called a meroscopium. And from up of the mountain, you can see the island of Ibiza. And Jabal al-Tariq is the name for Gibraltar and Arabic the mountain of Tariq. And Tariq was the general that led the conquest of Spain in 711. Okay, now we can go to the beginning. Okay, now I'm proud to say I knew two of those already. Good. Which ones? Uh, Sirocco. Sirocco. The reason I learned that is because there used to be a car called the uh, Pontiac Sirocco, did you know? Uh-huh, yeah. And, uh, and the oud, that's just an instrument I got introduced to uh, because I was in a class and we learned all kinds of instruments. Yeah. So really fun learning instruments from around the world. It was just a wonderful teacher. Okay. Yeah. Now we're ready to go back to the top of the poem. Yes, please. Thank you. And I got to do this. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And, and Mare Nostrum is the, what the Romans called the Mediterranean, RC, which is what we always call it. Mare Nostrum. How to find the thread uniting everything? Pottery, donkeys, artichokes, refugees who play the violin, are doctors or poets, feel pain on dry land and underwater. I watched them push by a hot Sirocco a maritime caravan without fixed destination, searching the direction of the wind, the coast, nursing thirsty children on the lap of the sea. They resemble the ancient drama held in Ithaca, 
War drives men away from home, darkens wife's eyelids. Until the champion returns exhausted, his archery skills miraculously untouched after 20 years of fighting political enemies. Hungry for his Penelope, he squints at the sky for signs of Athena's protection or any new god influential enough to save all Telemachus. Like yesterday, for some, memories hung abandoned on olive tree branches, burned houses, a headless doll by the seal. Still, thick strokes of blue painting the horizon and its fisherman's boats persist in my mind as my everyday companions, my lifeline. Tuna fish for centuries mindfully are now butchered for the benefit of plutocracy, dressed on the outfit of Japanese palates. You have the eyes of a shaman, she said, reading an uncertain future on my palm, glancing at invisible sunken ships, oars disintegrated, amphoras still holding garum from Nalaga, the favor of the Republic. She disappeared under fistfuls of tight stars in a patera filled with 200 souls in a lamenting oud. Still, laughter, the best medicine, echoes across waves. Little has changed. Same alluring beaches beneath Icarus view, more drowned the scents, same season of exiles, the new gladiators. Similar feet border the coast, collecting goose barnacles, treasures to eat or sell, words sing out loud in ancient tongues. Still, I yearn to see Ibiza from the Mongo, climb Jabal al Tariq to salute African brothers. I walk to the shore would brought me my first two languages, to remember who I am, at what ceremony I got my scales. Oh. I suppose the, chest, the chestnut eyes sang to a woman who kissed my cheeks in Ephesus, hair equal to sea urchins hidden underneath rocks, skin octopus soft, like the one curled around my leg when I was 10, its tentacles in million suction cups, each one as afraid as, afraid as it was. From Al Jazeera to Istanbul, Lives nurtured by the same liquid color dance to music from a guitar called home. It's not just history, but the temple where we receive the meter to measure the purity of light from the density of honey to the unpolluted transparency of cellophane. The thousand shades of this ethereal pigment, this gift of presence, always changing, ever vibrant. This sea reveals my people and the images engraved in his waves. And I have changed this to also to surf, but. Uh, ah, okay. I'm done with this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a mouthful. I know it's history is what happens today, yesterday, my life, my love for the sea. Well. You know, I admire this. Uh, maybe that's why you're an award-winning poet locally. <laughs> I have uh, two questions okay. about the forum. Mainly because I want people to understand why you did these things. The first one was uh, between the poems, you have five asterisks. Okay. I think I almost let the cat out of the bag. I said between the poems. Oops. I mean, between the stanzas. Okay. okay. Why, why do you have the five asterisks? Oh, you don't think it's necessary? Uh, you know, it was just to lead to the uh, terminology and the bottom of the poem to clarify some of the terms. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, let me make myself clear then. <laughs> I'm referring to the ones between the stanzas. One, oh, two, three, four, oh, yeah, oh. Those. oh, yeah. The other asterisks, I think everybody knows, but these, okay. the five, 
Why are they there? I thought it was, you know, because I thought it was kind of dense to kind of given a little bit of breathing space. Perfect answer. So this is a way of sectioning poems without using numbers. Some yeah. people would go one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh -huh. But here's a way of getting something a little more continuous, but not continuous, putting the asterisks in between. Uh -huh. So you know that it is all part of one large concept, but it's to be taken stanza by stanza, poem by poem, almost, is a way you could put it. So that's something I wanted to point out because it just hasn't come up yet until now. Oh. And you did another wonderful thing right about, let me find it. Yeah, here it is. In this stanza, you stumbled on a word because you improved it. Now it's the word brown. You made a chestnut. Yeah. And whenever anybody makes a wonderful mistake like that, I get very happy because it shows that this person carefully edited this poem. Well, unfortunately, I sent it to you before I made those changes. Yeah. Because the last line, I also changed waves for surf because I used waves before. But that was after I sent it to you. So. Sorry. And uh, yeah, I just want people to be aware that, uh, you know, this is something good poets do. They'll look at their words and they'll ask themselves, mm, is this word too ordinary? Is there a better word? And uh, conversely, another thing they tend to do, I'm sure you think about this too, is that you, you try not to repeat words unless you mean to repeat them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, but the, the key here is that's just a great example of changing the brown eyes, which is okay, to the chestnut eyes, which is twice the price. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got right off. And then I got the history lesson. I mean, the first part I knew about Odysseus, where that was the second stanza, right? Yeah, there we go. And uh, the third, was that the third stanza? Yes, the one, two, three. Yeah, the third stanza really gave me a wonderful surprise when it, we're talking about tuna. Uh -huh. Because uh, here's a poem that has its feet in the past and the present. So tuna fish, excuse me, tuna. <laughs> a fish. Uh, tuna fished for centuries mindfully are now butchered for the benefit of plutocracy, dressed on the outfit of Japanese palettes. And what's so fascinating about that for me is that the word pallets, I almost wanted to say plates. Hmm. Yeah, but of course, pallets is far, far better, far, far better word than just plates. You know, not that long ago, it was one of those tuna for over a million dollars. So they're really butchering them, which is very sad. And, uh, see. Yeah, that vocabulary really came in handy. For stanza four, am I counting correctly still? Uh, um, yeah. This. The Icarus view. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. well, that's what is happening also with those uh, mi migrants that are crossing the, the sea. I mean, they're drowned and some are just made into slaves. I mean, it's just a terrible thing that's happening to so yeah. people. Wow, really, just, uh, yeah. It's just a very rich with history stanza. Uh, where sing out loud in ancient tongues. Lovely, just lovely. Uh, and yeah, these are all like, you know, they're different episodes, so to speak. Right? Here we have the woman in a Oof. Ephesus? How do you say that? Ephesus? Yeah. Yeah, in Turkey. yeah. Yeah. So that's even the, the very names of places are evocative. Uh, yeah. And your descriptions, right? Yeah. Hair so equal to sea urchins hidden underneath rocks, skin octopus soft. Oh, wow. That's a great description. 
because I was going to say that that uh, you know group that stands uh, all those you know does it's a little more personal. I did have an octopus wrap around my leg, which it was kind of a scary experience. And I also have this woman kissing me uh, for no reason over there, you know, different parts in the Mediterranean, you get a lot of different experiences, but people are all in a way to me, very similar and very warm. Mm -hmm. well, I had a thought, but it went away. So I'll go to the next thought. Uh, yeah, and this last stanza, I, it was the fifth line, one, two, three, four, five, yeah of honey to the unpolluted transparency of cellophane. That line, you know, it's got uh, not just a visual, but I, I felt, uh, it felt tangible. Like, I, you know, these were touchable things, honey and cellophane. That's just, uh, it just makes the poetry, oh, my thought came back, yay. It makes the poetry, what you were talking about, you know, the more personal, but then again, by being more personal, it becomes something that uh, I like to think people can relate to. Universal. Uh, yeah. No matter where you are. <laughs> Liquid color dance to music from a guitar called home. Oh, God. Okay, people, we can officially declare it. Alicia knows how to drop sentence bombs into your brains. Let's try another poem to prove my point. All right, now I have to figure out how to get to the next poem, I think. Which I'll see if I can just open it. Yeah. Otherwise, I might have to close the share. No, you see the next poem, yes? No, I see the same one. You don't, okay. I'm gonna have to uh, close the share and bring it up again. Then. That's because these are three separate word files, so they don't interchange. Well, Even you if have... you can do it on your screen. Okay, I have them, uh, yeah, hold on a minute. Um, It'll be a piece of pie. There we go. Now you've got the second one, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, no, I have the same one. Wait. Oh, wait. Did you want to do this one? I have the second one. Oh, I thought you wanted uh, me to do it. Yeah, I've got the second one up, but if you want to take care of it, I'll be happy to let you take care of it. All right. What is there? Yeah, yours is nice and large. The next one, which is a short one, because, okay. So this I wrote recently, and I think it's more about, it's true about my relationship, but it's a, everybody's relationship, but not relationship to the earth, I think, that we are so unconscious about what we're doing to it. From inertia to consciousness, we reflect the earth and vice versa, anonymous. How many times I hear, I hear her saying, oh, just, uh -oh. Okay. I, do, uh -oh. I do the same thing, we just uh -oh. wait, wait. Okay, because I say. What happened in that first line? Wait, wait. Yeah, it says, it's, it's the only way to Compostela. So just in case, I think, I assume most people knew, but then I thought maybe no. Santiago de Compostela, which is Compostela, the field of stars. And it's the where the uh, shrine to James, the apostle, Jesus, apostle James, has the shrine and where is the in northern Spain. And that's the Camino that has been since the Middle Ages, the pilgrimage, what you call the way. Like yeah, I mean, so having those notes makes life easier for the person reading the poem. They don't have to Google it. Yeah. But I like to think if someone really cared to figure it out, they would Google it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. You make it easy. Okay, go ahead. How many times I hear her saying, laughter is the only way to Compostela, meaning the serene expanse of the Milky Way. We dream of joining one blissful day as a stardust. But she didn't laugh when I told her I was leaving. She looked down at her sandals and rubbed her eyes like a child whose eyes stung from sand from the wind. It was summer. Heat started creeping through windows and without words, she closed the heavy drapes of a possible enlightened conversation. Slowly but persistently, warmth turned into cold silence as we watched a wall erected brick by brick between personalities forged years before birth. Still, I remember the day she asked me, how will we prepare for the aftermath of getting, of getting sick and dying? Cremation versus burial was all we could, we could discuss. The injury caused by fear and grief 
was beyond us. Our differences anger her, but failures to agree never bother me. Truth turns out to be a personal paradox without consensus in life, a roller coaster of beauty and bitterness, nightmares and hope, fear and bravado and appeal, not easily swallowed, even with a glass, glass of Cabernet. It will have work if one of us, any of us, could have unplugged could have unplugged for an hour or minutes, as when our computers stop responding and we know exactly what action to take, allow the hummingbird of time to display its healing colors and the space between problem and solution. We gave little, expected much from each other, from, from, other, from the other, and also nothing less than jolly joy, which cannot be gotten from the outside. Happiness is an inside job and darkness from selfishness cannot be fought by heating it with a broom. Light is needed. But how will we learn to ignite our own candles to share with others, I ponder. It's no consolation that we are all screw up. Even our most together friends cruising inside their electric cars, publicly taking care of an earth traumatized for our lack of self-care, the main ingredient for world health and amity. Germans are now learning to restore appliances and electronic devices instead of tossing them into garbage piles to be buried or sent to sea. We could not have known that by not repairing relationships, the earth we love will sicken. I left because she didn't stop my hands from grabbing neither suitcase nor catalog of failures, but mainly because neither earth nor love can heal without forsaking all models. I am sad, yes, but I sense saying goodbye is just like saying hello, an awareness of a new road ahead. Yeah. Well, this poem is different than the first poem because the first poem was sectional and this one feels more continuous. Yeah. But you still have that ability to make analogies that uh, turn a story into poetry, really. Try to. There's going to be a lot of lines I like here. <laughs> Prepare yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, the serene expanse of the Milky Way. We dream, we dream of joining one blissful day as stardust. Mm -hmm. Then a little farther down. She looked down at her sandals and rubbed her eyes like a child whose eyes stung with sand from the wind. Wow. Uh, I'll go to the second stanza. That's a short one. Although I could finish off with the first one and say, without a word, she closed the heavy drapes of a possible enlightened conversation. Whoa. That was great. And in the second one, which we can still see, uh, maybe this is in keeping as we watched a wall of record brick by brick between personalities. So you got a conceit going there. Mm -hmm. Can we go to the third stanza? Yes, sorry. I forgot that I was there. <laughs> it was in my screen. Yeah, see, you weren't patient enough for me. So sorry. it's your job now. <laughs> This is the way I envisioned it, that you know the poet would be doing the scrolling. <laughs> it doesn't always happen that way, but yeah, this is a fourth stanza. Oh wait, is it a third stanza? Well, the middle one we see here where it says, still I remember. Yeah. Uh, this one gets into it, right? Uh, the aftermath of getting sick and dying, cremation versus burial. But then you get the, you know, then the magic comes, the poetry comes. Truth turns out to be a personal paradox without consensus, and life a roller coaster of beauty and bitterness. Wow, who can't relate with that? Nightmares and hope, fear and bravado, and a pill not easily swallowed, even with a glass of Cabernet. Oh yeah. You speak for many. Yeah, and if you can scroll down a little bit more, you wanted to say something? I was going to say that, yeah, I think that it's a universal experience. We all have some of that at least. Yeah. yeah. 
And that's part of what a reader does, right? We bring our experience to the poem and we try to relate to it. Yeah. But there's some, something in this stanza that I have never heard before in my life. Mm -hmm. And I love it, and I love it, and I love it. That's what poetry is all about. You get to hear something you've never heard before. The hummingbird of time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That is my favorite analogy so far. Oh, you can explain it all you want, but I just love the sound, the vision. Allow the hummingbird of time to display its healing colors in the space between problem and solution. It's like a multifaceted diamond. And of course, the rock itself is the hummingbird of time. Oh yeah. Uh, in the next stanza, happiness is an inside job and darkness from selfishness cannot be fought by hitting it with a broom. <laughs> I laughed out loud on that one. Inside my body, okay? I didn't do it out loud. I didn't want to laugh inappropriately, but. All right, you can laugh. That is a funny one. That is a funny one, you know. Well, I guess I was uh, trying to balance it with the, the deep inside, which of course everybody knows. Happiness is an inside job. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, fighting, uh, it doesn't help. You don't get light that way. So the broom sounded like a good. Uh, Amen. Amen, yeah, right you are. I have a feeling there's a little more poem here. There it is. <laughs> uh, what did I write down here? I wrote down the hummingbird of time. I wrote down the broom. Now this one, this uh, penultimate stanza, it shifted a bit for me because it said, uh, it started talking you know, more in a global sense, the main ingredient for world health and amity. Germans are now learning to restore appliances and all this. It got very technical there instead of tossing them in a garbage pile to be burned, uh, buried or sent to sea. So that's very real. But then you made the analogy. We could not have known that by not repairing relationships. That was the last word I expected at that moment. The earth we love would sicken. Ah. Now it comes together, yeah. Well, I, I thought the German thing was too prosaic in there, but then of course, that's what I meant. You know, you cannot just keep tossing things and creating piles of garbage. You have to You're work. actually, well, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, that's just. Oh. You're serving two minds, right? There's the, the, eco the ecology mind and the relationship mind, and here they come together. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last stanza, this is really, I'll, I'll say quite honestly, it's not my favorite because it doesn't have the mind-blowing analogies in the other stanzas here. This one, the ending is kind of uh, gentle. It says, I am sad, yes, but I sense saying goodbye is just like saying hello and awareness of a new road ahead. That was too easy, too easy. I'm sorry, I, I, Alicia, she can, she can knock it out of the park, but that one was more emo than uh, image -o? I don't know. <laughs> I guess I was I mean, trying to get into forsaking the old models. Yeah. You cannot keep doing the same thing we had been doing. So yeah, you have to yeah. say goodbye to something. And there is the acceptance of yes and, and look ahead. So I was trying to be hopeful, but I think I... You know, I You've got the su uh, neither suitcase nor catalog of failures. I mean, that, yeah, that, that works. That's the best uh, thing in the last stanza. Okay. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Don't be wrong. This is just... Uh, I like to think most poets would kill to be able to write like this on a consistent basis. So you do very well. You really do. I'm just trying to earn my pay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> by giving something, some type of critique to every poet. And so very honestly, that ending, you know, the ending was just a little too easy. Even the line, maybe you consciously made the last line shorter so there would be a road ahead that's not yet paved. Right? That's what I'm getting from having a half line. Yeah, okay. There, maybe that's your intention. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading it right. Maybe I'm putting my own ideas in, into this. Yeah. My intention was not to be too dramatic, but be more like, you know, okay, this is the way it is. This is wrong. The old models are not working. And mm -hmm. I'm saying goodbye too. That's what I, at the beginning, the relationship, the yeah. personal relationship, I'm saying goodbye, but 
she's not crying, but she's obviously unhappy, but it needs to be done. So, okay, maybe I could. Endings are beginnings. Yeah. They are. People got to be more aware of that. So your poem is doing that service. Now, how do you get that third poem up? That's the tricky part. Yeah, okay. Oops. Stop the share. She got that part right. Okay, I need to go back. Bring the other poem up. Okay, I need to get in here. How do you open this? Yeah. Oh. I love critiquing so your poetry. It's a good challenge because you're okay, such a good writer. Okay, I may have to share uh, this whole and then look at it. Uh, I'll, I can share it if you don't want to share it. <laughs> I got it handy too. Either way. We're not under strict time constrictions here. I do try to keep it uh, not you know too long, but who wants to screen share? Is it you or is it I? Uh... 